Hi there, my name is Keith Bunn, the pastor at New Life Christian Fellowship in Thunder Bay. Thanks for joining with me. And this being the second Sunday in Advent, we're looking at the concept and uh, the reality of peace. You know, last week we lit the candle of hope, uh, discussing the, the impact of hope on your life. Uh, the abundance of God's hope for you is so powerful, but yet I need to receive it. Uh, you know, you may not feel like you're experiencing much, but the abundance of God's hope is there for you. We looked at Ephesians chapter 1, verses uh, 3 to 8, and talked about the abundant hope that God has for you, where you're blessed with every spiritual blessing because of your union with Christ. You're adopted into his family, and God has poured out his glorious grace on you, and your freedom has been purchased with the blood of Jesus. You are forgiven. God has showered his kindness on you with along all wisdom and understanding, and God chose you in advance. So give thanks. You know, um, you are advance notice of God's hope in this land. You have been given tools, a spiritual anointing, to touch others with the hope of God. You embody not just hope, the abundance of hope. God's many blessings that he has poured out. This week, um, we're, we're continuing on to focus away from the commercialization of uh, Christianity and the Christmas message and, and looking at what we have to give. And this week in peace. We read in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. The government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord's heaven's armies will make this happen. You know, where do you find peace? Jesus came to bring into the world a peace that transcends armies and politics. The captains of the Lord's armies are doing something. You know, uh, we read in Isaiah the passionate commitment of the Lord. The Lords of Heaven's armies will make it happen. If we read in Exodus, and I, I want to look at a perspective here. There's two passages we're going to look at. Exodus 4, verse 24 to 26. You know, on the way to Egypt, at a place where Moses and his family stopped for the night, the Lord confronted him and was about to kill him. But Moses' wife Zipporah took a flint knife and circumcised her son. And she touched his feet with the foreskin and said, Now you are a bridegroom of blood to me. When she said bridegroom of blood, she was referring to the circumcision. After that, the Lord left him alone. You know, there, there, for most of there needed to be peace with God. Now, we're, things aren't, were not exactly right with Moses. And here his wife, who is a Midianite, grasped the situation that God needed to be honored. And she did what was required. See, without honoring God, there is no peace. And then we read in Joshua 5, verse 13 to 15, that when Joshua was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a sword in hand. And Joshua went up to him and demanded, Are you friend or foe? Neither one, he replied, I am the commander of the Lord's army. At this, Joshua fell with his face to the ground in reverence. I am at your command, Joshua said. What do you want your servant to do? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals. The place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did as he was told. See, Joshua had a task and Moses had a task. But before that task could be completed, before they could even consider entering into that task, God had to be honored. There's something about honoring God that brings peace into the relationship and then real peace to the soul to face whatever's on the other side. Honoring God comes before mission. Both of these men had received direct 
mission, words from God, yet there needed to be more. There needed to be devotion and honor. You know, we desire peace in our soul. But how do you, how do you walk in peace when the circumstances around you are all crazy? We need this peace-filled focus. Uh, we're going to look at three stories. People, they describe people in tough situations. And in the midst of craziness in life circumstances, there can be peace when the focus is on the Lord. Daniel chapter 2, verse 12 to 18. We read that the king was furious when he heard this. He ordered all the wise men of Babylon be executed, and because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. He asked Arioch, why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Arioch told him all that had happened. And Daniel went at once to see the king, and requested more time to tell the king what the dream meant. And Daniel went home and told his friends Hanai, and Mishael, and Azarah what had happened. And he urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them mercy by telling them the secret so they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. And in short, Daniel goes on to survive, but not just survive, but thrive because he honors God, the God who he serves. And in chapter 3, verse 13 to 18, Daniel's friends face a similar situation. Nebuchadnezzar flew, flies into a rage and orders that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made. And when you hear the sound of the musical instruments, but if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God who we serve who is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Difficult circumstances, crazy circumstances, but peace can be found in all situations, regardless of the circumstances, with a focus on God and a desire in your heart to honor Him at all times, above all else. Then we read in Acts chapter 7, verse 54 to 60, where the Jewish leaders were infuriated with Stephen's accusation. They shook their fists at him and in rage, but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God, and he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the place of honor at God's right hand. And they put their hands over their ears and began shouting, and they rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. Inner peace. Inner peace that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and even Stephen walked in, is seen as they honored the Lord with their devotion and focus on Him. A focus not on the circumstances around them, but rather the God above the circumstances. God was preparing a soul peace for them regardless of what was going, regardless of the outcome, whether it was life or death. Death is not the end, but the end seems to be when things don't work out the way we expect or even desire, and we wonder, is it of God? 
sometimes we get half answers and we get what I call a shattered peace. Have you ever had your soul peace shattered? Have you ever had your, your, your focus just shattered because of what's going on? When we look at these stories, we recognize there's no guarantee of a positive outcome for any one of them. What is a positive outcome? You have to walk ahead by faith in the peace of your soul and in relationship with the living God. But there are times when we get pressed even to the point of breaking. Let's look at Peter. He was confronted by Jesus. And, and Jesus told Peter in, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, Get away from me, Satan. You're a dangerous trap for me. You see things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. And then Peter was challenged when he lost vision, when he was walking on water in Matthew 14. Jesus said, yes, come. And Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sing, Save me, Lord. His peace was shattered. And Peter was broken when he denied Jesus three times. And we read in Matthew 26, 75, that Jesus' words flashed through his mind. And before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times that you even know me. And he went away weeping bitterly. His peace was shattered. You know, in the broken world we live in, with broken lives, you will mess up. You will have brokenness. Your peace will be shattered at one point or another. We lose focus, just like Peter. Yet the Lord pursues. He pursued Peter. He reinstalled him, his relationship. He poured out his love to him abundantly. Then there's the Apostle Paul. And even though he, he is such a, a, an adversary of the kingdom, he came to faith and, and walked with the Lord in a passionate way. Yet, even there, he had challenges. And we read in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 5, 7 to 10, Paul says, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan, to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three times I begged the Lord to take it away. And each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know, brokenness, as broken as we are, there's peace in God's grace. The circumstances don't change the, the presence and reality of God's grace. It, it brings comfort into our lives, but we just need to open our eyes and our hearts to it. So you can't see the grace of God until you need it, or so it seems. So where, where do you find peace? You know, peace isn't the absence of noise. Peace isn't that nice cup of tea and a book or a cup of coffee and your favorite music playing. Peace is something that is deep within the soul. It's not the end of all wars. It's a, not a consensus between all races and political parties. We, we need this soul peace that comes from the grace of God understanding you're saved by grace through faith, not by your works, as Paul says in Ephesians 2, verse 7. But it's the peace that touches the human soul in the midst, in the midst, when you're in the midst of oppression, war, and famine, and trials, as we've read this morning. It's a peace that can't be bargained for, or bought, or fought for. It's found at the feet of Jesus. 
or he loves you and forgives you. Forgiveness and love flow out of Christ. Forgiveness and love is, brings peace to my soul. So can you wrap? Can you wrap up some of that peace today and, and share it? Well, why wait till Christmas? Do it now, the way the phrase goes. We need to be living and giving the gift of soul peace today. Grace, give grace, give love. See people flourish in the peace of Christ that's on your soul. If you don't have that peace, it can be yours today by accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's my prayer for you, that you would receive the eternal gift of soul peace. This Christmas, this day, right now, wherever you are. Let me pray for you. Ask the Lord that you would refresh us and remind us again and again. We're saved by grace, not by how we're dressed or what we look like. We're saved by grace through faith, not by our works. You can't work to, to get the, make God love you more. He just loves you right the way where you are. Accept that, that he loves you as a sinner and that he wants you to repent and just come to him and receive his forgiveness. And I pray that you would refresh us with that amazing peace deep within our soul. And I give thanks to you for the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Have an amazing day and may you be encouraged to turn to the Word of God to find truth, health and life, and especially peace this day. Thanks for joining with me.